Hi everyone and welcome back. Welcome to uh, these React interview questions. And uh, in this playlist, we have already covered a lot of questions about Angular, JavaScript, and now we are covering some some questions about React.js. Okay, so let's continue on that. So next question is what is children props, right? To render the child content, we always use this dot props dot children, right? So you can understand the uses of uh, children using this example. I want to see what all uh, content this particular component is having. How can I render that, right? So I can just use this dot props dot children that will represent the the children of this particular tag. Children means whenever you are writing HTML, whatever the content is coming inside that opening and closing tags that is considered as a children of that node. Writing comment can be this is not uh, a good question. I mean will not going to be asked in interviews what is the purpose of using super in the constructor with props argument okay this is important so when we write a class based component we always access state using this dot state props using this dot props so we, we would be able to access this dot props only if we are we are calling the the parent class constructor using super keyword and passing props in it so a child class constructor can't make use of this reference until super method has been called right so the same applies to the subclass as well the main reason is passing props parameter to the super call is to access this dot props without this you can't do this this will come as an undefined okay and there is no difference uh, outside uh, the constructor i mean in the outside the constructor you can use uh, this dot props same as you are, you are doing earlier if you are not passing props here you should be able to access this dot props outside the constructor but when you are doing it inside a constructor you will get undefined what is a reconciliation process when a component props or state change react decides whether the actual dom is necessary by comparing it with the virtual dom it will uh, it will see okay do we need to uh, do the rendering process that decided by the reconciliation process okay if state had changed we need to re-render the component and show the changes on the ui how to set state with the dynamic key name this is uh, this dynamic key name this is needed in the forms where you have a multiple text fields you don't want to write a handle change method for each and every text field then you can use it something like this you can just write a one common on change method for all the text fields handle input change and then this dot set state it will take and you need to have a name attribute in each and every text field okay so if you are changing in the email text field email state will be updated if you are changing the username password the appropriate will change you just need to put the proper id id should represent the field id should be username id should be email password for different different text fields and this we normally use just to avoid writing a lot of phone change methods for each and every text field what would be the common mistake of function being called every time for the component renders right you need to make sure that function is not being called while passing the function as an argument this is the common mistake we always do so to avoid this we just need to use this dot handle click right so now when you click on to this button then only this handle click will get called if you are doing something like this then what you are doing is you are assigning a function call to the on click method so it will get called with without even doing a click is lazy function supports named exports okay let's uh, understand this what this question means is lazy function supports named export so if it is talking about uh, lazy loading in angular like you are using you are writing a react module or react component and now you are doing a lazy import so react lazy is now available in the latest version of react lazy and suspense suspense is needed on routing but if you want to import some component lazily then you can just use lazy and you can actually do the dynamic import this you can do react uses class name over the class attribute so in general html we use class but in react we are using class name because class is a keyword in javascript so we can't use the same thing so we have to change it to the class name what are the fragments so 
while we write JSX in our uh, React components, we always take care, okay, there should be a wrapper uh, for all the children's. So we sometimes we unnecessarily create a div tag. So React Fragment is avoiding, is helping you to, to avoid unnecessary div creation, right? So if there is no react.fragment, then to make it correct, you will be wrapping it inside a div. But you don't need to do that. Fragment, you can just put react frag fragment. It will not create any additional div for you. And it should be able to compile and render these components. You can do it in the, either this way, or you can explicitly say react.fragment. And this is a shorter syntax. Uh, why fragments are better? So fragments are really helpful. You consider that you are writing a flex container flex container and all our child container and you are creating each and every child node as a separate component so instead of if you keep uh, wrapping everything inside a div then you will break the chain of this flex container right flex parent child container so instead of doing this you can just use a fragment which will not create a necessary div and it will not break your chain of parent div relationship right and uh, this is really helpful for the HTML rendering also that you don't have additional divs for the child components. What are the stateless component? So generally this was there in 15.x if you are writing simple dumb component not having any kind of a state which is just uh, doing receiving data in the props and rendering the JSX. What are the stateful components? It's just uh, if the behavior of a component depend on the state and obviously it's a stateful component it had some you will initialize some state and uh, in the render function you will be writing some dom event to update the state it is also can be written in the functional component now we can use huge state hook to initialize the state right so this is a equivalent functional component having state how to apply validation props in react so you might uh, have seen this prop type validation for react component so whenever you are writing react component you are defining the prop types something like this either you can do it like this or you can also say user dot prop types and whatever the props you are receiving you can do the validation okay uh, name is of type string and is required age is also required and of type number so you must get the same parameters okay it's like a property validation uh, type and required validation for the props you are receiving in the component advantage of react it's use the virtual dom it has a faster rendering it uses for building the uis okay easy to write unit test cases easy to integrate with the frameworks and all i will not go to the limitations and all it's just a view layer for mvc to have mvc like structure you just need to have these external library like redux or mbox or recoil js okay uh, there is a learning curve react is just a view library not a full framework you need to be dependent on the external libraries to introduce or to write a whole full full blown application okay what are the error boundaries so if you are familiar with the updated lifecycle methods, we have a derived state from props, component did catch, component did catch, and get derived state from error. So, what happens at the runtime when you get uh, error in the React components? You will get uh, console errors, right? A lot of red lines on the, your browser. To avoid this, you can throw custom messages, okay? Some internal, some React component error occurred, something like this, right? So, you can create a higher order component which can be error boundary it will use component did catch and get derived state from error methods so whenever any error is thrown from any of your child component it will catch it and it will just return something went wrong on the browser window instead of showing these unnecessary unnecessary errors you will just so my visit is your like root component in the whole application you just wrap it inside error boundary it will take care of handling the errors coming out from the child components okay so very basic support of error boundaries so we can use componented catch errors and all what is the use of react dom package so react dom has all these different methods react dom dot render hydrate find dom node unmount component and node 
so this is used to unmount a component from the DOM node render to render a component on a particular DOM node okay so react DOM dot render this is the main uses of react DOM library it takes two argument first is the component you wanted to render and second argument is the container okay what is the react DOM server so react DOM server object enable you to render the component to a static markup so it helps in server side rendering if you are not using any kind of framework like Next.js and all, you want to do a server-side rendering with React. And what happens in server-side rendering, you have to compile the React component and you have to convert that into HTML markup before sending it to a client. So you can use render to the string from React DOM server. It will actually convert the component into HTML markup and it will send you. How you can use inner HTML? Sometimes dynamically you wanted to put the html content inside a body you can just set that using dangerously set in your html and just put your get your markup jsx here how to use styles in react inline styles you can use external styles you can use stylus you can use post css all these libraries this is the dynamic styling you can pass that as a json object okay this styling this is styling is a little bit different here we are not writing the css a plain css which we write on the html dom it's a background image right it's not a background dash image it's just like a json object we have javascript object as a style and you are passing it as an inline how events are different in react in dom events in javascript events which are like lower case uh, javascript react synthetic events are in the camel case like on click on change on key up uh, what is the impact of indexes so whenever you render uh, gsx or render the child component inside a loop to identify each and every child component or to help the reconciliation process we have to provide a key for each and every child component so react could be able to identify and do the changes future changes to the appropriate right is it good to, good to use set state in component will bound method uh, yes, it is safe inside component will bound method, but at the same time it will recommend it to avoid asynchronous initialization of component will mount. This is a older lifecycle methods component will mount get executed before render. If you do some kind of asynchronous initialization, then your component will be blocked until unless you get that asynchronous task done. So it's better you do it all these things in a component did mount. What will happen if you use props in the initial state okay that's fine we can use it we can initialize the state of a component through the props but what happen if the props is getting changed your state will not be updated so that is what happening here so you initialize the state using props right and you are able to print it using this dot state dot input value right but how we will be able to update this once there is a change is happening in the props we can't right because state is not updated either you have to just keep watching the props value and do the set state again on the input value so always don't assign that props directly to the state if you want to see the updated value just use this dot props dot input value so if new props value is coming you would be able to see the new value how do you conditionally render a component in just uh, render you can actually use this either you can use the ternary operations or at the rate at the rate so if address is there then only it will render this jsx or you can use if else or ternary expression okay so let's hold on to this so we have covered a lot of questions what we will do is next set of questions we can cover in the next video uh, thanks everyone thanks for watching